Hey guys, it's Julian here. I'm in my studio. I've actually got another video that I'm working on there on Premiere. But today we are going to be talking to you about how the small details make up the big picture and why really focusing and hammering down on the small details is an important thing to do on the step to musical enlightenment and making something great. So to begin, I feel like really, you know, I've got my little list here. I feel like, you know, as you go on your journey, especially on my journey and sort of on the path to quote-unquote musical enlightenment and just getting really good at what you do, this is kind of what you do is you just sort of like focus in on smaller and smaller things. It's like, you know, when you're first starting, for example, you know, you're just trying to figure out like, how to use the program, how to, you know, where do I find kicks, where do I find good kicks, how do I put a, what is a good kick pattern, like, how do I do this, so, this is kind of like the big stuff, it's like, you know, this is just simple stuff where, like, then once you get to the step where you're a little bit better, you can put the kick pattern in, you know where to find a good kick, then you're focusing in on, like, okay, how do I make the kick fatter, then you get to a step from there where it's like, okay, I know how to drop saturation on the kick, I know how to make it fatter, how can I make it cleaner but still strong, like, with the saturation, and it's like you see like each step of the way is kind of like you're going like you know one one step deeper down the rabbit hole and this is really where I think the true like strong qualities in most tracks lies like in these small details like it might be like you know the kick has this nice saturation to it or maybe the way the kick and bass are playing off of each other and so I really think that this is what it's important to do is like if you want to get better try and focus in on smaller and smaller things in the track now the other thing here is that I think the small details are the connective tissue that can kind of make your track cohesive as well. Like a lot of times people ask me like how do you make your track kind of fit together? Like when you listen to a lot of the best tracks it feels like everything really sounds like it's in the same world so to speak. Like you know it might be the texture like maybe it all sounds like it's going through a tape machine. Maybe it all sounds like it's going through a certain compression or something. Maybe it all just kind of it's like similar drums whatever it may be. But really, I think that those details lie in the little small little nuances in between the cracks where you're going to be able to kind of tie things together. You know, for example, like, to make your drums sound together. Well, what's going to make them sound like they fit together? Well, it's the little things. It's like, you know, they might have a little bit of extra saturation on them, or they might all sound like they're a little bit compressed off of each other. You know, stuff like that. They all have kind of like a similar tiny bit of reverb in the background, and it's like... These little details that are, again, the things that are really going to be able to connect your track together and make things feel really cohesive and not just make it sound like you dropped in a hi-hat and then you dropped in a kick and then you dropped in a snare, but like you really took time to put everything together and make it feel complete and make it like feel like it all comes from the same place. Now, something else that I think is important to note here is that, of course, simplicity is always best. Like, the simplest version of something is always going to be the best version. And learning how to add, like, little small things to things, that's really how you're going to be able to make, like, a simple track that's going to work really well. A good example of this would be, like, my video from yesterday. If you watched it, I'll link it in the description. It was, like, the, making these kick grooves with the low end where you have, like, a little kind of subtle thing happening where you're playing with the velocity in the rumble kick and... Because of this, it kind of gives it a little bit of a more nuanced sort of groove in the low end versus using like a reverb or a delay or something like that, which would just be da 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 And so it's little stuff like that that I think is going to allow you to make kind of a more interesting track because, you know, this way you can get that groove with just your kick and your bass. You don't have to add like another percussion on top of it. And so once you learn to kind of do little things like this, you'll be able to make more simple tracks that are more effective. And this is ultimately the best is if you can use as few instruments as possible to communicate the best possible track. That's really the goal. Like, I'm sometimes almost even trying to make tracks with, like, five or six elements, you know, like, nothing more, because really I think simplicity is best, and the best way to make simple tracks is to know how to add little details, like that thing I described, with the rumble and the velocity to, you know, really bring it to life. So yeah, and then the last thing that I have here is just focusing, you know. I think when you learn to really hammer down the small details, you learn to kind of focus your track. You know, you learn like, okay, for example, when you first start, a lot of times it can be tempting to put together like three hi-hats on top of each other just to say, oh, well, I'm layering these to make them big. But when you're first starting, that sounds good because maybe it sounds a little bit bigger. But then as you get a little bit better, you start to study other tracks and you realize like, okay, let me use one hi-hat. And then you start to figure like, 
okay, if I'm using one hi-hat, I have to make that one hi-hat sound big. So what am I going to put on that? And it's like, you start to kind of learn from that. So I think that really, like, just learning to focus on these small details ultimately is going to make your track simpler and, yeah, just more focused, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I just wanted to give you some tips I picked up on in my time in terms of just focusing in on small details and really learning how to take your music to the next step, not just with, like, you know, buying some new sample pack or buying a new VST or something, but really just kind of with your mindset and just thinking a little bit. There's no Ableton in this video. It's just me talking, I guess you can see the speaker and the microphone, but nothing really that musical in this video, just talking about concepts and ideas that can help you take your music to the next level. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe, and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. I've got my sample packs linked in the description. This is a great way to support me if you guys are enjoying this video. They're all just like 5 or 10 or $15, not too expensive. But it's a great way to help me out for making all these videos. And yeah, thank you so much guys. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.